All right, everybody, welcome. This is the penultimate episode of our walk through the Divine Liturgy of St. John Chrysostom, where we will deal with the final preparations for Holy Communion, and then we will talk about Holy Communion itself. Uh, and we will, uh, the, the next episode after this, we'll focus in on the dismissal and the ending prayers. So, uh, and that will be the last episode of this series. So, um, Without further ado, Father George, if you could uh, open for us. Our Father, I mean, excuse me, O Heavenly King, Comforter, Spirit of Truth, who art everywhere present and fillest all things, treasury of good things and giver of life, come and dwell in us and cleanse us of all impurity and save our souls, O good one. Amen. Okay, so now, just to sort of remind everyone where we were. We had just finished saying the Lord's Prayer. The deacon uh, is out in the uh, nave with the faithful, directing the singing of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, once that's done, the priest turns and blesses the people. Uh, Peace be unto all the faithful respond unto thy spirit. The deacon then says, bow your heads unto the Lord. Uh, the faithful say to thee, O Lord. And then the priest prays a prayer at the bowing of the heads. We talked about all that at the last class, so I'm not going to go over that again. But the reason why I reiterate this here is because of the very last line, what the faithful are saying at the very end of this, which is, um, which, sorry, I'm having a minute. Yes, okay. Sorry. Which is, uh, they say, amen, right? Now, this amen is a rather long and drawn-out affair because it's going to be covering over what happens next. So the deacon is still out uh, in front of the icon of Christ, or, um, and uh, the, priest, the priest prays, uh, attend O Lord Jesus Christ, our God, out of thy holy dwelling place and from the glorious throne of thy kingdom, come and, and come and sanctify us. O thou that sittest with the Father on high and that invisibly abidest here with us and vouchsafe by thy strong right hand to impart unto us thy most pure body and precious blood and through us to all the people. So this is being prayed while the faithful are saying amen. Now, you you notice in here that this is one of these spots where uh, the irrelevancy of space is, is made very obvious, right? Because we are, the priest is beseeching Christ out of his holy dwelling place, uh, like, you know, sort of in heaven, where he sits with the Father on high. And who uh, and is asking him to come and sanctify us, and who is also already here, who invisibly abidest here with us, and vouchsafe by thy strong right hand to impart unto us thy most pure body and precious blood, and through us to all the people. So asking you know, Christ to give the priest communion and to give all the people communion uh, through the hand of the priest. So this is, uh, again, sort of the idea of nested priesthood, right? Um, that Christ himself is the great high priest. Uh, uh, yeah. While this is happening, the deacon is standing outside and uh, wrapping his aurorian around himself. It says uh, cruciformly, which is sort of if you were to have like a Greek style orarian that doesn't have an enforced bend in it, then this is sort of like what you see subdeacons wear, where the where it's crossed over their chest like this. But in the case of Russian style auraria that have this, uh, they have a, a an angle built into the side for the Russian style double auraria. Uh, you can't really do that. So the, the point of this is more that you're folding the Aurarian in such a way that it doesn't get in the way 
for doing Holy Communion or distributing the gifts or things like that. Uh, Father, did you have anything to say about this particular prayer? Just that it refers to indirect, well, the, there's an icon over the, over the space of the royal doors showing Christ distributing communion to the apostles. Right. And then there's another icon on, in our case, on the wall that we have that's of um, Christ, the king and great high priest simultaneously. So both of those, all of those things are um, iconographically represented that we're now saying. Yeah. In words. So, yeah, that's it. Yeah. So, uh, so then the priest will uh, bow and three times, each time saying, Oh God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy on me. Oh God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy on me. Oh God, cleanse me a sinner and have mercy on me. Uh, now the, the deacon is sort of looking through the curtain to see that motion, right? And because, you know, it usually works out that this happens right after the amen, but sometimes there'll be a little pause while the priest finishes up that prayer. And then the deacon says, uh, the deacon, the, the, having made those bows, the priest stretches out his hand to, and touches the holy bread in order to lift it up, in order to make the elevation. Uh, so this is, he's lifting up the lamb. Uh, and as he's about to do this, the deacon exclaims, let us attend. And the priest says, the holy things are for the holy. Uh, which is to say these holy gifts, the holy body and the holy blood of Jesus Christ, these are for the holy people, for the holy ones. Uh, St. John Chrysostom, I almost put these quotes in here, but I decided I'd just rather talk about them, uh, says that the priest is simultaneously inviting people and uh, cautioning them to stay away. He's, the priest is simultaneously saying, those who are holy draw near, those who are not holy stay back. Uh, and then he, he also talks about how, uh, this was in another sermon uh, that he was preaching, uh, aiming at the people that, you know, they prepare for communion just, like for Pascha or for Christmas, right? Uh, they aren't, they're sort of, they, they, they sort of do their normal lives and then it comes time for a big feast and they know they have to prepare. And so they prepare to do that and they get, and they get, you know, they, they repent of their sins and they, uh, and they confess. And so they're clean. And St. John Chrysostom says about when the priest is saying this, he's like, he's not just calling for the clean. The point is not only the people, is, is not just the people that don't have the dirt of sin on them. Instead, he's calling for the people who are holy, who are being conformed to the image of Christ. It's beyond just not being dirty right? It's beyond just not being sinful. It's, it's being like Christ. And so, yeah, keep going, Father. It's a positive, not a, not a negative. I mean, right. And the other thing that's called for in it is uh, the holiness, holy and devotion are related uh, ideas. And so it's calling for at this moment on the part of those who will commune, total devotion to yeah they're doing no other focus no other idea nothing else intervenes yeah at this point yeah i just wanted to talk about what i do i mean it's, it's still closed off and not seen but i pick up the lamb that has been consecrated and lift it up above the patent maybe two inches or something as you know it's not a matter of holding it up to the sky it's just a matter of showing it uh to the lord and showing it to whoever's in the altar and so forth like that and yeah indirectly through what you just said pay attention please right anybody who's attending so right i so in the sermons from saint john chrysostom it sounds like 
at least early on, there was this full like lifting, right? But I, I imagine that that sort of got toned down after, you know, a couple of incidents, right? It would seem unwise to lift the whole thing. I mean, it's nothing like, like what you do when you lift them both up. Right. But you do lift them up somewhat high. Right. Not, not, any way, not in any way to put the gifts in danger of being spilled or anything like that. And the same for what I'm doing right now. Right. And this is what we're talking about. So... I want I want to note that like this seems to be an almost impossible thing, right? Because who of us truly can say that we are holy, right? Like we're repenting, we're working on like God is making us holy, but like if the holy things are for the holy, we're kind of if we're doing if we're right. Yeah, right. Hmm. You know, if we're being honest, we're kind of out of luck, right? But this is actually dealt with in the response, right? The response of the faithful is, one is holy, one is Lord Jesus Christ, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. None of us is holy in and of ourselves. Like, none of us is holy in and of ourselves. None of us is truly holy in that sense, right? This is sort of like, the rich young man coming to Jesus and saying, good teacher, what must I do to be saved? And Jesus saying, why do you call me good? None is good but God alone, right? Like, it's the same, no one is holy but Jesus Christ. Um, so there's a there's a quote from St. Nicholas uh, Kalasalas that I want to share. I probably butchered that name, that I want to share. Uh, C-A-B? Yeah. Yeah. Book on the liturgy, right. And he says, No one possesses sanctity through their own efforts, nor is it a work of human virtue, but comes to all from him and because of him. In the same way, if you put many mirrors in the sunlight, each will shine and radiate light so that one would think there are many suns, while in reality there is but one sun that illumines everything. Similarly, when the Holy One pours himself out into the faithful, he becomes visible in many souls and brings forth many holy people, yet he alone is the Holy One. Um, I recommend that book for everybody that can read and understand. Right, right. This is... The discussion of the liturgy is non plus ultra. Yeah, yeah. I, I've only read it in excerpt, so uh, yes, I... <laughs> <laughs> I need. I need to. It's, it's very. It's viable. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Forgive me. <sighs> okay. Um, so again, the idea here is that the holy things are for the holy, and that's not. That isn't to say, like on the one hand, it's none of our merit that grants us to respond to that. But that's not the same as we shouldn't respond to it, right? Somewhere else I was, I heard it, I think St. John Chrysostom again ended his sort of sermon with this punchy line like, if you're holy, draw near. If you're, oh no, it's from the, dead, it's from the Didache, that's where it's from, which is writings, this is, which is the oral tradition handed like apostles, right. by from the apostles and so written within a generation of the apostles from their instructions and it's and it basically comes down to he, he who is holy draw near he who is not repent maranatha the lord is coming right mm -hmm. um or the kingdom of, which which pulls the whole thing back to what john the baptist and then christ himself was preaching right repent for the kingdom of god is at hand and here we are in the liturgy the kingdom of god is here is now repent right this is this is the moment so uh but then but then so none of us has the capacity to be holy on our own and yet christ in us makes us holy so that like the sun shining in a mirror, 
reflects its own light and the mirror looks as if it is emitting light and is in a sense truly emitting light it's just a reflected emission right uh so that happens with us as we draw near to christ christ comes and he fills us and then is reflected out of us um and and so uh, yeah anyway um any more comments on that father no thank you yeah uh, yeah um Apostolus makes it makes it yeah uh so then after they say this the choir starts ch chants the communion verse of the day or of the saint and on sundays which is where you'll most often encounter it they will say praise the lord from the heavens praise him in the highest hallelujah 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 there will be a few other verses that they sing too that vary based on based on the day um i think for example anthony this past week in everlasting remembrance shall the righteous be he should not be afraid of evil tidings so uh, that's that's from john uh since i mean it was anthony imitated the baptist and that's the baptist's uh communion verse when he's uh, um okay uh oops what, what are we doing sorry technical difficulties okay uh give me a second everybody oh, good. um okay so just to make sure after that little hiccup you guys can see the screen again the final preparations for communion that's what the that's what the distribution looks like on the patent folks right so you remember back to the Prosca media service right where we were setting up uh, we were talking about the network of intercessory prayer right and we had the lamb which is now the body of christ there in the center with the letters i c x c n i n k a on it for jesus christ conquers and then to the right hand of the lamb you have a large triangle for uh the mother of god and then to the left hand of the lamb from the lamb's perspective yeah stage stage left I, right <laughs> all of this is from the lamb's perspective right so the mother of god is to the right of christ the saints are to the left of Christ, and that's nine uh, nine pieces of bread for nine categories of saints. And then below at the foot of the lamb, you have lots of little pieces of bread taken out. And these are pieces of bread that are uh, commemorating the civil authorities, the bishops, uh, everyone that the priest remembers, which is like everyone and then everyone that all of us remember that have in our little commemoration books uh you know that you know their, their names have been read and bread has been taken out for those names so this is you know at the foot of the lamb you have uh you have these pieces of bread that are uh the faithful that that are the us and those we are praying for and so the pattern is a circle because it represents the whole world right so on this on this metal plate we have uh, a representation of the whole church and really of the whole world right yeah. um There's so one of, one of the commemorations is the uh civil authorities right 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 i mean there's a reminder of the fact that whatever we think of the incumbents in the various offices of the nation uh, we are commanded by the apostles to pray for them and that's replicated in the way we do the first media right so i also want you to remember that the lamb itself has been cut from the underside in the shape of a cross so that those so it is still one piece of bread because the seal at the top, the I-C-X-I-X-E-N-I-K-A, Jesus Christ conquers, that seal is still of a piece. But the bread that is linked to it underneath has mostly been cut apart along into, into the four quarters that you see marked. Okay. So the deacon goes into the altar and uh, 
and the priest is holding the holy bread elevated, is holding the lamb elevated, and the priest says, break the holy bread, master, or break master the holy bread, at which point the priest breaks it into the four quadrants. Um, like so. So now you see it's four individual pieces. And as he does that, he says, broken and distributed is the Lamb of God, broken yet never divided, ever eaten though never consumed, but sanctifying them that partake of that partake thereof. So um, we're talking about the, uh, we're talking at some level about this mystery, right? That, that the body of Christ is broken on the cross, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the lamb itself is broken into these four quadrants. But even though it's broken, it, it remains whole. And the church, which is his body, remains one, right? Um, and, so, and so his body is eaten, but is never is never consumed is never used up is never gone, uh, and in the eating, it makes holy, it sanctifies them that partake of it. Um, do so you this have, do you yeah. Think it's a picture. Okay, what I actually do is the Jesus part. I see part is put at the top. I'm, I'm getting there, Father. I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Okay, that, that's coming. That's coming, right? That's coming. Yeah, yeah. So, so just so you know, Father, there's, like, it, it, like, so for those that are listening, Father, like, what Father is talking about, all of this next bit happens really quickly, right? While I'm saying this, while I'm it's, saying this. Right. It's all happening really quickly, um, but I'm not presenting it really quickly because I want you to notice what's happening. Okay. But the thing Father is talking about is happening right now. Each of these quadrants is placed in a different spot. So uh, I've removed the labels. You remember what is what. I'm removing the labels for clarity's sake. You're going to see the IC quadrant goes to the top of the patent, farthest from the priest. The XC quadrant goes to the bottom, nearest the priest. And the NI goes to the left. Um, and the KA goes to the right. So, and then... All of the, then the triangle for the mother of God is placed sort of in the center. And all of the other pieces of bread for all the various commemorations are sort of clumped into the middle. Now, I want you to notice what happens here because this is, this is profound. So as the priest is doing this, it's not in the book, but I've, every priest that I've seen does do it does this as they're placing the pieces the, where they are they say jesus christ conquers or isus christos nika which is what that what the what the writing on the lamb says as i place each as i place each quarter uh isus and then i place it is christos i place it nika i place them at, at simultaneous with saying that now this is I had seen priests do this because I've been serving for a while. I've you know, seen priests do this a lot, but it was like a year ago that what I, what I saw was this. Jesus Christ conquers is the cross. The cross covers the whole world because the pattern is the whole world covers the whole church right this is jesus christ conquers everything how does he conquer everything by his cross and in that conquering covers everything and surrounds everything and becomes all and in all um yeah um so 
That's what happened. Yeah, right? It's like, this is the gospel, right? This is what is happening in church now. This is what is happening in the world now, that the cross covers everything, that Jesus Christ fills everything with himself. Um, and so uh, he's, you know, yeah. Um, I can say more, but it'll just be repeating what I'm saying. So, Father, do you have anything additional? Well, I just want to, this is especially important in this uh, um, chicken little atmosphere that we're all living in, where the sky is always falling, we're always looking to be crushed. Uh, in the atmosphere of the, of the society now, it's just insane. And so this is a helpful reminder. More than that, it's a saving reminder of uh, what is really uh, happening in the world and the universe uh, through the power of the life-giving cross. So by him who was crucified thereupon. Yeah. So we, don't, we don't have to sweat the chicken littleness of this, of this society. We don't have to. Uh, Natalia, you might need to be a fan. There was a, a character, a cartoon or a story character where Chicken Little says, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. And, you know, didn't the, the poor, poor scared animal didn't know what she was talking about in any case. Uh, but we're, but the society, everybody seems to be running around like um, <clears throat> headless chickens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's not yeah. the way it's supposed to be because what is really over top of everything is what you're looking at right here in this picture. Yeah. I do want to, I do want to point out to another aspect to this that is just sort of popping up in my mind, looking at it is you'll notice how the pieces of bread for the faithful and the pieces for the of bread for the saints are at this point intermingled. It's very hard to pull them apart from each other. The mother of God sort of stands as chief of the saints and chief of the faithful. Uh, mm -hmm. But this is Paul writing what to the Corinthians, those to the saints, to those who are called to be saints, right? And so, so we are all one church, one body under the cross of Christ. Um, so, it, so it reflects the New Testament, as you point out, the New Testament usage of the word saint. Where yeah. I think Paul calls congregants to the saints that are in Ephesus or something like that. Yeah. Yeah. And saint being, saint, a saint is somebody who's devoted. A saint that we have on the wall is totally devoted and proved himself. We're uh, saints in training, we, we hope. Yeah. So. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. Uh, remove the cross because now we got to talk about what happens because each of the four pieces of bread is going to have its own purpose. Um, so we'll talk about the different purposes in a minute. Um, uh, but uh, so the IC portion is going to be used for the intincture. Uh, it will be placed directly in the chalice. The XC portion will be used for the communion of the clergy, and the NI and the KA portions will be used for the communion of the faithful. But we're going to see how that plays out over time. But I'm telling you this now so that you're not caught off guard as you see it happen. I've also heard the IC part called the reserve, in case you don't have mm. enough pieces <laughs> for the <Right>. table. <laughs> What's floating around in there like that as the reserve or packing off of if you need to. But <laughs> that, that will make sense to everyone in just a minute. Okay. <laughs> so the deacon then says, fill master the holy chalice. Uh, fill master the holy cup. And so uh, remember in the chalice is wine with a little bit of water placed back in the proscomedia service, but now this has been sanctified and is the blood of Christ. And so uh, the deacon says, fill the holy chalice, master. And the priest takes the IC portion and makes a cross over the chalice with it and says, the fullness of the Holy Spirit and places it in the holy chalice. Now, at some point, you could think of this as being, this is the body and blood of Christ together right this is this is not separated in parts now we have the whole physicalness of christ um and the deacon says 
Amen. Uh, then the deacon says, uh, bless the warm water, Master. At this point, an altar server has brought over water that has been heated up and has given it to the deacon. The deacon presents the water to the to the priest, says, bless the warm water, master. And the priest, what? May I interject? Oh. Before, before church, I heat water to boiling and put it in two thermoses uh, and, and put it uh, under the table of preparation. And so that's used for two purposes. It's used for uh, warming the, um, the water, the wine that the people will have after communion, and also in the, what he's talking about right now. So, so that hot water, it's hot, it's not warm, it's boiling or it's hot or close to it. So, yeah. right. In, in the in my previous parish in North Carolina, uh, there was a hot pot back in uh, in sort of the vestry, and during the Lord's in the litany before the Lord's prayer one of the servers would go back and plug that in to get that water boiling. Uh, and there was at least one Sunday where I was the chief server or really the, maybe even the only server and I forgot to do it. And so there was this just waiting uh, while the water got hot because it is actually important to have the water be hot. But we'll talk about that in a sec. So the maybe priest... Likewise, had we vestries. But right, yeah, yeah. The priest blesses the water and says, Blessed is the fervor of thy saints, always, now, and ever, and unto the ages of ages. Amen. Other translations will say, Blessed is the warmth of thy saints. Um, but I think uh, this is an intentional pun that's going on here, right? Uh, because it's we, we talk about fervor meaning the energy, right? The zeal of the saints. Um, and so this is this hot water is in this case standing in for that zeal for that energy, um, but it's also warm uh, in a in a physical chemistry sense. It is literally filled with energy. Um, then the deacon pours that water into the holy chalice making the sign of the cross with it, saying, the fervor of faith, full of the Holy Spirit, which is, again, asserting that the energy of faith, the energy that the saints have, is because the Holy Spirit is in them, right? And you pour it in, in a cruciform, like it says, you pour it in in the form of a cross right. as much as is needed. Now you say amen three times too. Oh uh, right, yes, yeah, yes, amen, amen, amen. I think the text I was pulling from didn't have that there. That's that's on me. I should have caught that. Sorry. Um, uh, so now, why is it important that we heat the water? Um, this is going to be somewhat disturbing okay i mean so we we have these prayers that we're praying now right about it um but i've i've read elsewhere uh and this was i believe in the book by hiram and gregorios right the chalice is filled with the blood of christ right living blood is warm Living blood is warm. And so we're not just using cold wine to sort of represent the blood of Christ. This is the blood of Christ, and one is to experience it with the warmth that drinking blood would have, right? There is an inherent strangeness, an inherent contradiction, uh, or like grotesqueness that is wrapped up in communion itself, but that's on purpose, right? This is this, like when Christ told his disciples, unless you eat my body and drink my blood, you have no life in you. What was their response? 
their response wasn't, you must mean that metaphorically. Like, you don't actually mean it like that, because that would just be wrong. No, well, they may have said that, but then many of them left, it says, after that. Many of them left. So, like, Jesus, if they raised those issues to him, he responded in the, like, no, no, I said what I meant. And then this is where Jesus turns to Peter and to the 12, and he says, aren't you going to go too? And Peter says, where else shall we go? You have the words of life, right? All right, Father, you want to go? I just said, and for my um, flesh is meat indeed, and my blood is drink indeed. It's yeah. Like an exclamation point on it, and that, you know, drove folks away, because it's gross. Right. You know, if you think about it, literally, it's gross. Right. So, I mean, and he also, the idea, I mean, t totally, uh, the idea of drinking blood was totally anathema in the in Jewish world, uh, totally. The whole idea of uh, blood pudding or any of those sorts of things that people have extrapolated out of the consumption of animals it was not permitted in the kosher world. And so the idea of drinking blood in any way, shape, or form was something that would have driven a Jew to up the moon. You know, forget you, I'm out of here. Uh, well, so this is actually important too because there is reasoning given in the Levitical code as to why the blood is to be drained out of the animals when you kill them. Mm -hmm. And the blood is supposed to go back to the earth for the life is in the blood, right? right? You're eating their meat. You don't get to eat their life itself, right? And so here, the life is in the blood, right? Mm -hmm. This is the blood of Christ. This is his life that he's giving to us. And in it, we gain life, right? It's, it's one of these things that is grotesque, except in its ultimate fulfillment, which is what you have here. Um, and that was the thing that grossed out early pagans, too. Uh, they say they, they, they practice cannibalism. Of, you know, they accused Christians of being cannibalistic uh, for this expression, for this, the, the, the expressions used in connection to the communion. So, so at this point, uh, communion is prepared. The deacon gives the warm water, whatever it like, gives whatever is left in the pitcher of warm water back to the server. He goes to the high place and turns and faces the table with his arms folded crosswise. Okay. And so now we enter into the communion of the clergy. Uh, the priest and the deacon, uh, well, I need to be better about actually doing this, but I, I see the priest hey, always do it, right? right. right. The priest says, oh, God, cleanse me a sinner. Oh, God, cleanse me a sinner. Oh, God, cleanse me a sinner, bowing three times. And then he says, oh, God, absolve, remit, and pardon our sins, voluntary and involuntary, in word and deed, known and unknown, by day and night, in mind and thought. Forgive us all in thy goodness and love for men. Again, even at this moment, all that has been said, the priest is recognizing his own unworthiness, his own sinfulness, and the sinfulness of everyone that is here looking to partake, and asking that God would absolve and remit and pardon those sins, the ones that they did on purpose, the ones that they had no choice to do, the ones that they did by things they said, the ones that they did by things they did, the sins that they know they did, and the sins that they don't know they did. Right. And thought, word, and deed, the whole thing. Like the whole shebang. Any sin that might have been done, please absolve, remit, and pardon it. Forgive us in thy goodness and love for men. Right? Okay. Um, and then at that time, I was, are you going to say, say this? I cut the Jesus piece. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're getting there. We're getting there. All right. Okay. So, uh, yes. Uh, now, the XC piece, 
is going, the Christos piece is going to be used for the communion of the clergy. And uh, for practical reasons, at this point, the priest chops it up according to the number of priests and deacons that are, that are present. Um, the way it's set up in the book is for, uh, is assuming one priest and one deacon. Uh, but it's kind of awesome. And so in that situation, uh, the deacon will uh, take uh, the body of Christ first and uh, they won't partake. He'll just take it. And then the priest will take it. The celebrant, the chief, the priest who is the actual celebrant of the liturgy, uh, the main dude, uh, he's going to take the body of Christ last. Okay. But what this means is if there are multiple priests present, they go before the deacons go, all except the celebrant. Um, and it's kind of awesome. So here you see the priest saying to the deacon, draw nigh. But if there are multiple priests going and the deacon happens to be a protodeacon, the line is actually the protodeacon says, priests, dr priest, draw nigh. You know, so there's, you know, um, you know, everything is done in good order with everyone understanding their various roles. Um, so, so at this point, though, again, assuming the sort of the simpler one priest, one deacon setup, the priest says, deacon, draw nigh. And the deacon says, uh, the deacon makes a bow. Uh, it says, behold, I approach into the immortal king and God. Uh, and uh, make, makes a bow and uh, will kiss the kiss the holy table, present his hands to receive uh, a portion of the XC piece. And then he kisses the hand of the priest that gave it to him. Uh, and uh, he puts it in his hand, right? And, uh, as the priest puts it, puts it in the deacon's hand. He kisses the hand of the priest and then they kiss each other on the shoulders and the, the deacon has, while doing all of this, has said, impart unto me, O Master, the precious and holy body of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ. And simultaneously, we talk over each other, but I say that the holy deacon uh, Christopher is in part of the precious and holy most pure body and blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ and for the remission of sins, like our lasting. Amen. So, I mean, it's right. not uh with felicitously it's not when it's not uh, poured over and right i give him give him his portion and so forth and right then, uh i also say something is that here uh so now now the the deacon gets out of the way uh he stays by the holy table but if there were any other deacons that were going to come after him he's moved around the holy table uh so this is all happening from the congregation's perspective, on the left side of the holy table. And so the deacon will move around, making space for anyone coming after him, but still holding his hands over the holy table, holding the body of Christ in his hands. The other, the other part you're not, uh, when, I, when I give you the thing and we, and we exchange a kiss, I oh, right. Think, uh, Christ is in our midst, and you say, "Right, oh, right, right, right." Yes, I, I exchange that with the, the celebrant. Exchanges that uh, with the other priests that partake, and with every clergyman that partakes. So everybody says that to each other. In a, in a, in a I don't know if this is uh, book stuff, but if there are multiple, yeah. like if there are multiple deacons, they share Christ is in our midst with one another. Uh, before this happened right that that happens earlier in the service uh when but but yeah yeah so so now it's time for the priest to take his portion for the celebrant to take wh what's remaining of the xc quadrant it says behold i approach unto christ the immortal king and our god the precious and most holy body of our lord and god and savior jesus christ is imparted unto me the priest or in Father George's case, the Archpriest George, under the remission of my sins and life everlasting. 
movement. And then huh. we, everybody goes, you've already moved to where you're somewhere. Where right. To do these prayers with the, with the body black. And uh, just uh, parenthetically, you make every priest and every clergyman, uh, deacon, makes his hands to receive the body uh, uh, like uh, taking a blessing. Okay. Yeah. Right hand on top of left, uh, the bread body in the in the palm of the right hand. Right. This oh, this also is incidentally why you will see uh, clergy removing their rings, especially their rings on their right hand, mm -hmm. because you don't want little crumbs of the body of Christ getting stuck between your finger and your ring. Right. It's a it's a very practical consideration. But so at this point... Well, there's another reason, too. The oh. order of holy matrimony, as high as it is, is less than the, or, than the, than the, uh, free, than the clerical orders. And okay. So, so you take it off. What I do is I take it off at the start. And, yeah. And, and leave it on, on a little plate that we've got there. Um, and then put it back on when the service is done. Right. Because I, I, it's not a matter of setting aside the holy matrimony. It's a matter of uh, now we we move we step up from that into this uh, world of uh, um, the the world of uh, communion and everything to do with that. So we take yeah. our, we take off our rings. And people do it at various times, uh, but it's always before we have this uh, here. So right. And so your your practical consideration is. Uh, also significant right right so um then the the priest everybody is waiting to partake we all all the all the clergy all the major clergy so the altar servers and the subdeacons and the readers are not involved in this but the deacons and the priests are all around the holy altar holding the body of christ in their hands and the priest prays uh uh, on behalf of everyone else, I believe, O oh Lord, and I confess that thou art truly the Christ, the Son of the living God, who didst come into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. Moreover, I believe that this is truly thy most pure body, and that this is truly thine own precious blood. Wherefore, I pray thee, have mercy on me, and forgive my, my transgressions, voluntary and involuntary, whether in word or deed, in knowledge or in ignorance, and vouchsafe me to partake without condemnation of thy most pure mysteries, under the remission of sins and life everlasting. Amen. Of thy mystical supper, O Son of God, receive me today as a communicant, for I will not speak of the mystery to thine enemies, nor will I give thee a kisses, did Judas, but like the thief do I confess thee. Remember me, O Lord, in thy kingdom. Let not the communion of thy holy mysteries be unto me for judgment or condemnation, O Lord, but for the healing of soul and body. This is the same thing the priest is going to say when communion is brought out to the faithful. And this is sort of a, a, a reiteration of the final prayers of preparation for communion uh sort of uh yes, crystallizing right. yeah you know i think there's an italicized notation saying uh, as you approach say this so, so people are anyway but yeah y yeah I uh, we you know depending we uh we clergy all say this at the same time aloud uh, quietly to as uh, at the same time on the altar table not just yeah this. I don't know. That's probably not in the book. So, I mean, I mean, yeah, um, yeah. Uh, and so then, that having been said, we all commune. We all we all partake of the we all the clergy all partake of the body of Christ at the same time. It says, and thus they partake of that which they hold in their hands with fear and all heedfulness. Um. Now we move on to the to the blood of Christ. And so here the celebrant goes first. And then all the other priests and then all the deacons would go. And so uh, the, the priest takes the chalice with both hands and with a cloth between, you know, under his chin to his hands in the in around the chalice just so if there's any dripping it's caught by the cloth uh which hopefully there isn't but just to be the safe. same as we do for the folks when they come up we have a cloth spread under your chin uh, right for the same reason right except 
there we have servers and like the deacon holding it and that may yeah. not be the case here, here. that's here. not the case holds himself. yeah it says of the precious and holy blood of our lord and god and savior jesus christ do i the servant of god the priest so and so partake under the remission of my sins and life everlasting and uh and then uh it said the book says the deacon says amen but in practice the 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 priest will take three sips and say in the name of the father and take a sip and of the son take a sip and of the holy spirit take a sip and after each of those sips the deacon uh at this point truly standing in as representative of the faithful says amen right so we as the faithful are are consenting are wholeheartedly agreeing with the priest partaking of the body uh, partaking of the blood of christ um then uh the priest says uh the priest wipes his lips and the chalice with the cloth and says behold this is this hath touched my lips and taketh away mine iniquities and purgeth my sins uh, i think our version of the translation is what this has touched my lips and my lips my iniquity is taken away and my sin purged, purged. And anyway that's right. a, quote, a quote from isaiah chapter six right 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 which is it's it's referring to when the seraphim takes a is it a seraphim i think so might be wrong coal, as a cherubim, right as an angel takes a coal, coal puts it on his mouth and so right it's supposed to burn you know right right <laughs> um and so in that way in that case this had touched my lips my my iniquity is taken away and my sin purged right by fire and that's right the of what the, the body and blood is is fire right so so then the the priest says deacon draw an eye and the deacon approaches and bows down once and says again behold they approach unto the immortal king and our god impart unto me O master the precious and holy blood of our lord and god and savior jesus christ and the priest uh says the servant of god the deacon so and so partaketh of the precious and holy blood of our lord and god and savior jesus christ unto the remission of his sins and life everlasting and here you have a repeat of what happened before although there's no amens after this oh, uh, do, do you i didn't remember whether you said it or not I, you know i i hold it while you take the sips and right man after each one myself ah okay I, okay you know, if you got a giant gaggle of everybody none of the amens take place <laughs> right like when we were in, in uh moscow the only amens were to do with what the patriarch did and everybody else just came <laughs> up and drank and went on you know right we had uh 200 clergy in the office. Right. <laughs> Yes, it's not going to be any ceremony connected to having communion other than coming mm -hmm. to get it. You know, mm -hmm. I said, yeah, that was a that was a, a I don't want to say fun, but it was very uh, uh, uplifting to take communion from the Patriarch of Moscow. I said, I went up and said, Yeri Georgi, Priest George, and he says, Yeri Georgi. <laughs> you know, I mean, it was a whole boatload of us uh, from all. Yeah. The and uh so you know anyway yes so, and so the principle so, is the same but if you got a great gaggle of clergy you can't do the particularities right well and even even when we were in lakewood for the clergy do and there was not 200 but you know a lot of people not, right. a, a bunch like it was still way faster right <laughs> so no other way to get uh, through it you know so. yeah the Vladika, what the, would happen is in that case is, is the bishop would do uh, the main, you know, well, Vladika Larian would do a few, but then mostly they they, they had a couple bishops. So, right. You come at it from each side. I mean, it was just the only way to handle it. You'd come at it from each side. Right, right. Uh, yeah, it was uh, uh, Vladika Irene. Uh, yeah. Was the one that communed me in that case. Uh, but yeah, yeah. So, Right. Anyway, as we were saying, so uh, the deacon partakes and the priest again, this time, not just sort of referring to, but directly quoting uh, Isaiah 6. Behold, this hath touched thy lips and taketh away, you know, 
thy, thine iniquity is taken away and thy sin purged. Uh, this is uh, at, at one point during one outdoor liturgy. Um, this will sound a little irreverent, but it was powerful in a meaning, like it was, it was very meaningful in a way I needed it to be. After doing this, Father George looks at me and goes, bam, your sin is purged. Um, and did I say that? You did. You did. And, and, I, and I needed to hear it, right? It was, you know, like that was, this is, um, yeah. And, and it still crosses my mind in, in think like this is, this isn't, this isn't sort of like a slow thing. Like that's not what the statement is, right? It's like, you're clean. Boom. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, well, I'm glad I was helpful, but I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> no. Don't quote it all the time, okay? No, right. no, I, oops. <laughs> as long as nobody records this and puts it up on YouTube, we should be fine. We just, oh, <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Caught, strung up. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Uh, right. So slowly in the wind. As, uh, <laughs> So, so anyway, the priest then divides the NI and KA portions of the lamb into small pieces sufficient for those of the faithful who wish to partake of the holy mysteries and places them in the holy chalice. The portions used for the Theotokos and the saints and the faithful and so forth are not to be used for communion and are not placed into the chalice at this time. That's going to happen. But so the priest is now dividing the NI and the KA portions up uh, based on an estimate of how many people are out there uh, that so are see, looking to commute. If you see a clergyman take a peek out the door, uh, that, that's part of the analysis that's happening right then to see who's in Right. Enough. Yeah, yeah. And you're right. Um, you're right. We sure could use a second one sometimes because we have like 60 or 70 people commuting. That takes a little while. Right, right. Um, now, while that's so, so what I'm having here is what it says in the book. Uh, our practice at Holy Apostles is a little bit different. Um, yeah, uh, and Say I've that. seen similar practices elsewhere to what we do, right? So, like, we're not outliers in doing what we do uh, because the book says that having cut all those things up, the priest says the priest covers the holy chalice with its veil and says the prayer we give thanks unto the O master lover of mankind benefactor of our souls that on this very day thou hast vouchsafed unto us thy heavenly and immortal mysteries direct our way establish a soul in thy fear preserve our life make steadfast our steps through the intercessions and supplications of the glorious theotokos and ever virgin mary and of all thy saints part of the reason for that is the practicalities are while you're right. communing or once you have communed uh, I'm well, just gonna. In our case, there's two of us, two priests, and so somebody communes you, and the other priest uh, is cutting things up, and he might not have been done cutting things up when you're done, and uh, so forth. So I'll take the right. you know, whoever serve, whoever is not serving, whoever gave you communion, will set the chalice back on the thing and uh, fold up the napkin and so forth while you're saying this prayer. Right. And the father, the other father, will start. Uh, will cut up the pieces. It right the pieces and right then, and then by and by uh you know take those uh, uh well put them into the chalice uh at the same time you're saying all this stuff right right so right so yeah so in our practice i will read this prayer and then other prayers that are appointed to be said later on uh I will say them at this point as well, and I'll we'll go over those prayers when we when we get there. Um, but it's basic. I mean, it makes sense the way we do it because this this stops what I've seen in some places where it is not the practice to read this out loud like this. That you can oftentimes get sort of idle chit chat happening while the ni and ka portions are being cut up and so having a prayer being read at this point especially sort of larger prayers is a way of uh retaining the holiness of the moment right put the hurting on, the hurting on miscellany right right um so yeah 
uh, again, I'm not naming any names. That's uh, uh, not not wanting to get anyone else uh, in trouble. But but it's a thing that I've observed, and having this practice is a way to get around. Is a way to sort of head that off at the pass. I was supposed to. We're supposed to be listing, attending upon what that one is, and the others. I guess you'll. Is this part of next session? No, no, no. So just it'll make sense to everyone else in a minute those the other prayers that i normally read at this point in the book are appointed to be read while finally cleaning the path that that i've but, never i've only seen that happen in one place because the guy was following the book closely but it stops the music right right and it it, it, it takes too long to do it then right uh, yeah stop yeah the music so people don't so, people do it now and then uh, when the patent's clean, zip, zip, you know. Right. Life. Right. When I, was, when I was at the OCA church up in New York, and I was talking with the priest, just sort of coordinating before the liturgy, and I asked about these things, and I said, it's, it's the custom that I'm used to, that I read this, and then I read those other prayers as well, at, right after the communion of the clergy. And he says, oh, yeah. I've seen that done a few times. Sure, do that, right? Yeah, you know, it's, like it's 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 not. This is not a thing that's outside the pale of practice, right? Um, so, um, right. So now the chalice has the blood of Christ in it that is warm. Has the quadrant for Jesus Christ. For, for Jesus, the IC portion, the intincture is in there. Uh, and then uh, has the NI and KA portions chopped up into lots of little bits in there intermingled. The whole thing has been covered with the veil or the chalice. The, the deacon receives the holy chalice from the priest. The royal doors are open. The priest uh, the deacon lifts the holy chalice, shows it to everyone, and says, uh, with the fear of God, with faith and love, draw nigh. Uh, some translations don't include the and love. Some do. I'm not. My custom is to say and love. That's what I've seen. Um, but then the faithful respond, uh, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us. Now, at this point, it is it is uh, appropriate. Uh, it is appropriate at the presentation of the chalice for everyone to to like cross themselves and touch the ground, right? Because this is Christ coming out to the faithful, right? This is this is Christ Himself coming out, and so again, this is announced with. In the fear of God, with faith and love, draw nigh. Um, and, you know, indicating the severity and yet uh, the blessedness of what's about to happen. And the faithful respond, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, which doesn't refer to the deacon or the priest. It refers to Christ, right? This is blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord is what they sang to Christ as he was entering Jerusalem on the donkey, right? And now, and this is just shown up, God is the Lord and hath appeared unto us and, and like is appearing to us now in this chalice, right? Mm -hmm. um, so uh, the priest then says the same prayer uh, that he said before the clergy partook of communion, I believe, O Lord, and I confess. Um, uh, while the people are lined up to receive communion, um, those that desire to partake draw nigh. While the faithful, uh, are, while the choir is singing, receive ye the body of Christ, taste ye the fountain of immortality. Um, uh, which, I mean, I don't know what more there is to say about this. This is like describing exactly what is happening, right? Uh, come and partake of the body and blood of Christ. Taste 
the fountain of immortality. This is the fountain that gives eternal life is coming out of this chalice. Um, and as each one desires, uh, as each one comes forward, they bow down, or rather this was done when the deacon brought the chalice out. They bowed down then. Uh, but they come with their arms folded over their breasts. And then uh, as each one receives the divine mysteries, the priest says, the servant or the handmaid of God, so-and-so, giving their church name, partaketh of the precious and holy body and blood of our Lord and God and Savior Jesus Christ, under the remission of sins and unto life everlasting. Behold, this hath touched thy lips and taketh away thine iniquities and purgeth away thy sins. I have never seen that phrase used. I, yeah, I... I say I go and unto life everlasting and then uh, kiss the cup and go on. Um, I've never said that, behold, this is a I've never said that and I've never heard it said. So I've heard it said. Sorry, keep going. What? Well, I just, you know, I hadn't, hadn't experienced it myself anytime. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, and also the doing of it, of course, but I've never experienced right. it when I wasn't. I just took the up through the life everlasting. Anyway, right. it, in a way, it, 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 it should be said because that's true, but. Uh, I suppose you got a lot of the yeah. severity, like the clergy, the clergy better watch their step. And right. Any communicant better watch his step. But a clergyman has a greater responsibility. So uh, that's why we, you know, this is taken, you know, the, you know, this is what you've received because you're like Isaiah at the altar at the Holy of Holies. Yeah. As a clergyman. And yeah. The folks, aren't, the folks aren't in that same position in this. Yeah. So yeah. Anyway. Um. Maybe that's why it's never said. I don't know. Well, I mean, and I imagine you've got a lot of people you're communing, right? There's, there's also a, a purely practical. Merely roll along, right. Right. You know. Um, so then uh, the deacon wipes each communicant's lip with the cloth uh, to remove any of the excess uh, blood that may be on there. And also to stop any sticky lipstick from getting on to the chalice. Because the next thing that happens is the communicant kisses the holy cup. In some traditions, they kiss the hand of the priest as well. That's not our tradition, but it is a thing that right. some people think. Lipstick should be eschewed, avoided, and otherwise condemned to anathema maranatha in church because yeah. you don't want to lip smack on anything in the, in the church. And yeah. You see that from time to time in a, a, glass on, a glass on an icon cover where you have a great big smack. <laughs> I mean, it's the reason why you have the glass on the icon cover, because at least then you can clean that. It's a lot harder to get that off of a well, yeah, off of an icon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anyway, after the last person has communicated, the choir sings, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Um, and now this is where we're going to end is with this slide, okay, which is not complete yet. We're going to complete it. Uh, so everyone is communed. The priest then takes the takes the chalice and goes through the royal doors back into the back into the uh, sanctuary. Uh, he gives the deacon the spoon and the cloth uh, because the deacon is not supposed to go through the royal doors without without being in the service of something, which is to say without holding something. Like, the deacon doesn't get to just go through the royal doors. Uh, so this gives the deacon a reason to go through the royal doors. Either way, the deacon gets back into the altar as well. Yes. And uh, Father Leonard used to say, he would, have been, having done that, he would lean to me and say, would you, could you? And I would uh, take the spoon and cloth from him and what, like I do you or whoever. If I yeah. Have, uh, you know, take it, take the cloth and the spoon from you and put it aside while you're doing the next thing, which is... So the next thing is taking the pieces that are on the patent and putting them into the chalice. Um, and so I'm going to go back one minute just so you can watch. This went faster than I wanted it to. You first take the piece for the mother of God and place her in the chalice. And then you wipe all the rest uh, of, the part, of the particles of bread into the chalice. 
while you're doing this, and this is the set of prayers that I would, that in our practice, I say while the priest is still cutting up bread. Uh, the deacon would, tech, would theoretically at this point be saying, having beheld the resurrection of Christ, let us worship the Holy Lord Jesus, the only sinless one. We worship thy cross, O Christ, and thy holy resurrection we him and glorify. For thou art our God, and we know none other beside thee. We call upon thy name. O come, all ye faithful, let us worship Christ's holy resurrection. For behold, through the cross, joy hath come to all the world. Ever blessing the Lord, we him his resurrection. For having endured crucifixion, he hath destroyed death by death. Shine, shine, O new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Dance now and be glad, O Zion, to thou exult, O pure Theotokos, in the arising of him whom thou didst bear. O Christ, thou great and most sacred Pascha, O wisdom, word, and power of God, grant us to partake of thee more fully in the unwaning day of thy kingdom. And so you see, uh, what we have happening here is Pascha, right? In this moment, we have communed. Christ is in us, giving us new life, right? We are in the mystical now that is eternity. We are in the now of the resurrection. We have beheld the resurrection of Christ, and thus we worship the Holy Lord Jesus. And we cry to the Mother of God, shine, shine, O new Jerusalem, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. Uh, and then we exclaim to Christ, O oh, thou great and most sacred Pascha, uh, grant us to partake of thee more fully in the unwaning day of thy kingdom, right? That this might increase even more. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the, the, the whole thing, I mean, we had the cross. Yeah. And now we have the resurrection. It brings to mind the Trapine. And before thy cross, we bow down, O Master, and thy holy resurrection, we him, we glorify. Yeah. It's all in one. The yeah. In every, every liturgy. Uh, yeah. Every proper liturgy, Basil or Chrysostom. Uh, Pre-sanctified doesn't count because it's not a proper liturgy. But, uh, <laughs> well, it's not. It's, it's a pre-sanctified. Right. You already did that. Right. Already. Right. And so, uh, so Chrysostom and Basil, either one, has this in it it's just it's a remembrance of the resurrection regardless of the time of year regardless of the day of the week this is recited uh yeah every every uh, uh, uh celebration of the holy mysteries so yeah yeah now uh at this point the, there's great concern to make sure that the discos that the patent is completely clean that all those particles get put into the chalice so the sponge that we talked about earlier being in, being there stored in the antimons is used to wipe down this to get all the crumbs into the chalice and while the deacon is doing this he says by thy precious blood O lord wash away the sins of those here commemorated through the intercessions of thy saints and you take the piece for the mother of god by hand right and then you brush the rest off with the uh, sponge right right um right and and so so this is this is really profound right because uh what's one you think about what we're saying all of these people that we are praying for we are asking god to wash away their sins through the intercessions of his saints right now there's another level of profundity that's going on as well. I'm not sure. I think I know the answer, but I'm not sure whether when the priest says, make this bread the precious body of thy Christ, whether that includes all the pieces of bread on the paten or whether it refers to just the lamb. Just the lamb. But at this point, all of those pieces of bread are mingled with the blood of Christ. Right. And all of those... All the people we prayed for, all of the saints and all the people we prayed for are joining together in the blood of Christ, uh, uh, fulfilling what has been said in that paragraph, which we didn't say here. That we right. We more fully than when day of the kingdom. Uh, and so that's happening in this, uh, in this literal action of you. Right. 
by putting the pieces in there. And, and what's amazing is if there's still pieces of the IC that are, well, the IC is a big piece, so you can tell it apart. But like the little pieces that the priest cut up to use for the communion of the faithful, right. it's you can't really distinguish them anymore right. from the pieces that were who we were praying for. Well, and I, so I, I don't try to do this, but it just by function of things. It's yeah. Just a little bitty, the, the commemorative pieces are just little bitty pieces. Whereas well, the body and blood pieces, uh, the blood, the body pieces are, you know, distinct. I try to make them distinct cubically uh, cut. That's not always possible right. because the limb or crumbles or something like that. But they're somewhat distinguishable, but that's not the point. The point is but, it's all one at this point. Right. The body and blood of Christ. Right, right. That 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 it is that the that the mingling is so much mm -hmm. as to basically make it irrelevant whether this piece is the body of Christ or a commemoration, right? And once, that once it's in there, you have to take the, care of it. You can't right. not take care of it because it's not the body of not body of Christ. It's it is that for all because the blood's infused in it. In, in right. It. And and this is the church right? right the church is all of the people that are in it that you know are being prayed for and are praying for and we through communion are so mixed up with christ that it becomes hard to tell where one stops and the other begins and it, truly christ like the blood intervening those other little pieces of bread Christ himself infuses us, right. making us to be little Christs, making us to be Christians, right? Um, anyway, um, that is uh, where we're going to end now. There's, a, there's more that happens that is sort of part of this whole motion, but it makes more sense in terms of meaning to stop here because... We now have like a complete, we're wrapping up what was begun back in the Proscomedia with, with the cutting out of all the different pieces of bread. Now we've seen all of those pieces of bread that came from distinct loaves and from distinct places all end up in the chalice with the body and blood of Christ. So uh, one might say that the next thing that happens is, to a degree, the main job of the deacon. Yeah. Oh, well, well so that's actually not all that much in the book, right? There's a little reference to it. Uh, yeah. well, but uh, the deacons do it. Yeah, too. right. The, the priest, I've seen when there's a whole great, you know, buckets of the material, uh, the, you know, Father Victor will join in with the, with the deacons to help them get it taken care of. But still, it's not something that uh, generally the deacons all do it one way or another. Right. Anyway, that's our thing. Father, do you have any other any other comments you want to? Uh, I'm very much looking forward to the last episode. Not because <laughs> it's the last episode, but because I'm looking forward to what's in it. That's why I'm yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, if you could... Uh, if you could close us out, Father. I will. I will. It is truly me to bless thee, the Theotokos, ever blessed and most blameless and mother of our God, more honorable than the cherubim, and beyond compare, more glorious than the seraphim, who without corruption gave us birth to God the word, the very Theotokos, be to be magnified. Night all. It's so yeah. lovely to see you. Ludmila, there's your face. Hallelujah. Yes, there is my face. Thank you so much for your prayer. <laughs>